Welcome again to the big match, an FA Cup semi-final special and what a special cup tie it is between Manchester United and Liverpool at Main Road, Manchester. It's McElroy running over it and Mickey Thomas, oh a marvellous save! And from Scotland, the League Cup final between Aberdeen and Rangers from Hampden Park, Glasgow. Chain is there, Cooper's there as well and it's driven in by Dawson. And we start with that FA Cup semi-final between Manchester United and Liverpool. And I can tell you that for raw and unrelenting excitement, well, I don't think I've ever seen a better one. And we start in the corridor beneath the stands at Main Road as the teams come from the dressing room. Liverpool, for the first time in their history, playing in an all-yellow strip. And Emlyn Hughes and opposing skipper Martin Buchan seem relaxed and cheerful on a day when everybody says it's the most tension-filled occasion in a footballer's life. Indeed, these are their last moments of comparative calm before they go outside and out there they're going to find a bright and crisp day they're also going to find a crowd of 52,000 waiting for them who have paid £160,000 to see this game. And what an atmosphere there is at Main Road on this particular and important day. Jimmy Greenoff, who won the final for Manchester United against Liverpool two years ago. Can he now strike the vital blows today? Since then, of course, Liverpool have signed Kenny Dalglish. He's already proved himself a winner of Cup Finals, the European final. Can he now take Liverpool to Wembley again? So the Liverpool team striding ahead at the top of the first division, a defence that's not conceded a goal in the FA Cup this season, now seeking a fabulous League and Cup double, a team that virtually picks itself for manager Bob Paisley, substitutes Steve Highway, that gives you some idea of the quality of the selection. Manchester United, meanwhile, a big test for 20-year-old goalkeeper Gary Bailey, his first season in the side, but in front of him so much experience in a team that's now found impressive form over the past few weeks. And up front, Joe Jordan preferred in the number nine shirt to Andy Ritchie. Dave Sexton, manager of Manchester United, has already won the cup with Chelsea back in 1970. A handshake from Joe Fagan on the Liverpool bench. Nice bit of camaraderie there. And uh, the referee today is David Richardson from Great Harwood. So referee David Richardson from uh, Great Harwood gets the game underway. Manchester United in the white shirts and black shorts attacking the goal to our left. And I think the feeling is that Manchester United might well go hell for leather at Liverpool to try and shake them out of their beautiful stride early on in the game. Two sides in tremendous form. Manchester United have lost only one of their last 11. Liverpool 16 without defeat and have conceded only two goals in their last 15 games. Kennedy's touch to Dalglish. Back to Denny Dalglish again for Liverpool. And Coppola in to give Gary Bailey a first touch of the ball for Manchester United. McElroy. Thomas. Hansen. Bucken off balance. McDermott. And Johnson. And... A strong challenge there by McQueen, in fact, hitting the ball against uh, the Liverpool man, and McQueen applauding the referee and linesman's decision that gave the uh, throw to Manchester United. Johnson, or rather, uh, Jordan, giving the play for Neil. It's Thompson. Case. Flicked in there for Dalglish. Oh, Dalglish! And a goal! Dalglish! You can't give him a moment to think or a yard to work in a penalty area, and that's what United did there. But what skill! Bailey couldn't quite get to it. 
and just inside that far post. Liverpool, a goal up. Kenny Dalglish, 17 minutes. Oh, that's a sign of triumph from the little Scott. What a fantastic season. He's got 51 goals now in just over 100 appearances, striking at almost a goal every two games. And at this level, that is absolutely remarkable. And he's done it again today. Bailey went plunging after it, but once Dalglish had got past him, the whole thing was academic. Now, a task for Manchester United against a Liverpool side that's not conceded a goal in the Cup so far this season and only two in the last 15 games. Greenoff. Jordan's right in there. And Jordan! effective that's when it all began as Greenoff heaved it into the middle Joe Jordan was there just inside the post Clements was beaten and United are back two goals in two minutes and a cup tie of epic proportions is now 19 minutes old that telling left foot of his? No, not this time. I wouldn't think Ray Kennedy would have been very pleased with that one. Hanson's header, and one by Hughes. Nickel. Play on, said the referee. And uh, an offside against Jimmy Greenoff. Sporting gesture by Jimmy Greenoff. Certainly he made, if that's the word, that uh, Manchester United equaliser by humping that high ball into the box. Phil Thompson now with a kick for Liverpool. Dalglish shoved in the back. Good refereeing decision, that. And he was at the perfect angle to see it. Jimmy Nicholl shaking his head, but there's no question in my mind that he just nudged the Liverpool number seven, Kenny Dalglish, in the back. So Gary Bailey, wondering what's going to come his way again. From Sunis, or maybe from Case, who's behind them. Hansen up here, but it might be a blaster from Jimmy Case. No, over it he goes. Kennedy's little chip for the left foot. Alberston just getting ahead to it. Here's Phil Neal, though, for Liverpool. Cross deep towards the far post. Dalglish is in there. And it was more of a smother save than anything else by Gary Bailey because although he lacks a few inches, as you'll see here, Dalglish in fact gets his head to this one. And it's Gary Bailey smothering it away. So a corner, which Dalglish will take. Swung in there cruelly, and it's Jordan's header. And Buckens' kick. Thompson and an offside given incidentally by the referee and not by the linesman the linesman kept his flag down Kenny Dalglish I would say was within a yard or so of the linesman and they do say that sometimes the linesman are a little too close to the situation to judge it accurately that may have been one of those occasions Brian Greenoff playing it back to Martin Bucken now Mickey Thomas, here's Arthur Alberston. One for McElroy to chase, they're releasing McElroy a lot to go forward into uh, attacking positions at Manchester United. Their longest serving player.
Liverpool starting the game clear favourites according to the bookmakers but at the moment United not looking the underdogs and a yellow card for Phil Thompson for that challenge on Joe Jordan no doubt at all in the mind of the referee there that yellow card was out so quickly and there's the challenge that brought it him more with the thigh it seems than anything but McQueen with the free kick United are winning one or two balls in that in and around that Liverpool penalty area which must be a source of some concern to Liverpool now can Koppel get it over he can oh what a good bit of play Jimmy Greenoff really what should have been an impossible angle but he almost made something of it turning superbly hitting it all in one go but behind Ray Kennedy, touched on by McDermott, and uh, Johnson hoping to get in there, Case also hoping to get in there, and Orbiston, that ball just wouldn't come down quickly enough for him to get it away. Neil now, McDermott, and now Orbiston can nick it away here for Jimmy Greenoff. Wasn't a good ball played there by Greenoff. That's a nice one though for Case, and a good one coming in towards... Uh, Penalty! Well, that is a controversial penalty. The shove in the back on Kenny Dalglish. Case playing it in there. Well, that seems a very, very, very harsh penalty indeed. McQueen has got a yellow card. But that seemed to me a guy with his hands at his side, making contact with the ball with his head. But the referee saw it another way. That seemed a, a desperately harsh penalty. But it gives Liverpool a chance. And it's Terry McDermott who's taking the penalty and not Phil Neal. McDermott with the penalty. Oh, he's missed it! Now, could Manchester United reform in time? Soonest. Oh, and a save! What drama! Great piece of play by Bailey and Liverpool have lost two chances of going back into the lead. That's the penalty miss. Bailey going the wrong way. Here's the corner coming in. And it was McQueen who got the header. But I must say, my feeling is that justice was done. What an amazing uh, series of incidents in that Manchester United penalty area. So poor old Terry McDermott, having missed the penalty, and now a free kick for Manchester United. And Sunas with that uh, shot of his brilliantly saved by Gary Bailey. So a free kick now for Manchester United. McElroy, McQueen right in there, so too was Jordan, neither got the touch. Massive throw. McDermott with the backward header. Thomas. And the referee wants a word with the Liverpool number two. And Alberson gets the free kick. Again, Brian Greenoff. 
Thomas there. Now can he turn it back? He can brilliantly. Hanson's header. Jimmy Greenoff. And Charlie straight in the arms of Clements. And still United are carrying this great battle to Liverpool. Thomas turning it back well. Hanson's header. Jimmy Greenoff shot. And a lovely shot on the turn there by Jordan straight at Clements. Queen winning that again well. Oh. And it is. He turns around to find that the referee wants a word. Willfully grabbing at McQueen as McQueen is shaking his head. McQueen really was intent on going all his own way there. And Hanson suddenly realised it. And McQueen is up again, waiting for Buchan to take this free kick. It's Jordan's header and Thompson's clearance. Dalgleish. And away go Liverpool now. Case. And Buchan's turn, no. A foul that time by Alveston. And a free kick for Liverpool. Well, the referee's made a few decisions that the crowd don't like, but he can only give it as he sees it. And there goes the half-time whistle. Of course, the most controversial decision he gave was the penalty to Liverpool, which Terry McDermott missed, which gave Liverpool the chance of going into half-time with a 2-1 lead. As it is, it's 1-1, a really brilliant goal, well, a, a good-headed goal by Joe Jordan, but so quickly followed that truly brilliant goal by Kenny Dalglish for Liverpool. Booze all around as the players go off, directed, I would think, in the main at the referee. The crowd haven't liked some of his decisions, but he can only give what he sees. And a half-time here in this FA Cup semi-final then stands at Manchester United 1, Liverpool 1, and we'll be back with the second half. Welcome back to Main Road then for the start of the second half of this FA Cup semi-final, Liverpool in the all-yellow strip, attacking the goal to our left. Manchester United in the black shorts. Buchan playing it back to Bailey. 1-1 one, one it stands. Buchan. Cut out by Neil. Sooners quickly switching it to McDermott. Case is outside him here. But here's Jimmy Greenoff. Nicole. That's a lovely ball for Jordan. The shot by Mickey Thomas off the mark. I think Jordan uh, was flawed there. I think he made rather a meal of it. And fortunately for United, the ball went on to Thomas. Phil Thompson. Dalglish letting it run, Nicol tidying up. Thomas with the throw for United. No, he's going to leave it for Alberston. Jimmy Greenoff. Alberston chipping it in there. Brian Greenoff was right in there, playing much more forward in the second half. Coppel's in there. And Brian Greenoff's in there. And Brian Greenoff has done it. This is the moment. Coppel right in there. Greenoff, who played so far forward under the Liverpool crossbar, and Manchester United are in the lead. Clements beaten for the second time, and Brian Greenoff with only 
two goals to his credit this season. And this the first of the FA Cup. Has put Manchester United into the lead. those Man United fans but can they hold this lead against the relentless Liverpool machine that penalty miss could really become costly Sunas Thomas getting it away but not very far Kennedy getting past one challenge after another Sunas Hughes presented with a second chance and Ray Kennedy in there now no penalty this time, no kick instead. Hughes whacking it in, it looked for a moment as though Kennedy might right be in there. So Case coming off, and Highway will go on. Ray Kennedy. Sunis playing it short here for Phil Thompson. Chip in towards Ray Kennedy. And uh, they tried to get the one-two going there because as soon as Dalgleish saw it, it was landing towards Kennedy, he was darting in there in front of the keeper. You watch that. See Dalgleish go, but it fell for Bailey. Out of play, United's throw. And Liverpool just cannot get the grip they want on this game at the moment, and they have now about 16 minutes to do it. Come on, Everton, Liverpool! And a free kick given to Manchester United. Or a foul on Jimmy Greenoff, right on the edge of the box which perplexed Liverpool and delights Manchester United, particularly if they can make it pay. Now, Jimmy Greenoff's there. Mickey Thomas is around the place. Sammy McElroy might well be having a dip here. It's McElroy running over it and Mickey Thomas. Oh, a marvellous save! Great goalkeeping because the deflection was a wicked one there, off the wall. But Clements soaring beautifully to push it away. So 2-1 it remains. A quarter of an hour to go. And a quarter of an hour for Liverpool now to keep their dreams of a league and cup double alive. A quarter of an hour for Manchester United to hold on and take themselves back to Wembley again. McQueen is there. Completely unmarked. Un well, that's not only uncharacteristic of Liverpool, it's absolutely remarkable. Just look at the space in the six-yard area, too, for Gordon McQueen. No wonder Phil Thompson was furious with his defenders around him. Now McDermott. Now Gleish is in there. And when he's around, all things are possible. Bailey and lost it and will regret it if he's punished for this now as McDermott turns it in McQueen getting it away only as far as Hughes and Dalgleish is in there and it uh, would have counted there's no flag up getting in there flicking it over Bailey but also over the crossbar Liverpool right back into it there. 
having scored that brilliant opening goal of the afternoon. Well, it's a warning for Manchester United if any of their fans are selling account chickens, and here's Koppel! No! What a brilliant semi-final! One moment Liverpool were right back in it, you seem to think at any rate, and at the moment, there, Koppel could have made it safe for United. Thompson. And the Reds go marching in, the United fans are already beginning to celebrate, and that might just be a little too early. Although here's Jordan, and here's Jimmy Greenoff, and Clements coming way out of his goal, and then Hughes backing him up. Good decision by Lineson and referee. Greenoff was maybe a foot inside his own half when that ball was played. Highway, getting in behind. Touch back there for Kennedy. When will the excitement end? That was a great contribution from Highway. So neat there. Nickel caught a little bit unaware, in fact. Down he goes. And a good diving save by Bailey. And while they were on the slow motion there, a free kick given to Manchester United. What a fine piece of goalkeeping by this young man. Now, it's with Brian Greenoff. Phil Neal ducking in there. Sooness getting it away. And a lot of space for McDermott to motor down that right. Here's Highway trying his luck on the right-hand side now. Beckham following him faithfully. And a throw for Liverpool. Eight minutes to go. It'll find Dalglish. They dare not let him turn overhead there towards Johnson. Oh, kicked off the line by Martin Buckham. From Graham Souness. And another corner. Dalglish up to his devilment again. There Souness is shot and Buckham on the line getting it away with effort. And Liverpool's fans rousing them to make a really big effort in the seven minutes that now remain. Neil finding McDermott. Highway outside him. Thompson up ahead of him. Bailey is down. And that's the goal. So near for United. And so far now, Thompson surging into the attack. Bailey can only touch it to Hanson. Thank you very much, the equaliser. 2-2. What an amazing cup time. And what a brilliant one. Liverpool up. And then Manchester United level and then up themselves. And now Liverpool are level. Seven minutes to go. time really that Phil Thompson had ever gone up into an attacking position and the smiles are back on Liverpool's face first time that Thompson had gone forward and it was his vital touch that opened up the way and Hanson's first goal of the season maybe it yet could be United's turn and look at the space out here now for Jimmy Greenock cross coming in Jordan coming to meet it. Ryan Greenock. Looks as though he's hardly got any strength left. Thomas putting it in. Hughes with the header away. And now a break for Liverpool as Neil finds McDermott. And Johnson soaring up ahead of him. And Highway swarming down the left. Taking on Nickel. And a good save by Bailey. That would have just crept in. Highway looking in great form. Pushing it away. And there's the strain of a manager, Dave Sexton, wondering now whether his side can hang on for these last few seconds. Come on, he says. Come on. Kennedy.
played there to McDermott, surely not. Knocked away though by Bucken once more. He played nearly two minutes of injury time. And here's Dalglish, over the head. McQueen with a header, what a game he's had. Neil trying to come in. Now Kennedy, and still the final whistle not coming. Hughes right in there. It's incredible this, and it's a free kick. It's a free kick for Liverpool. What an amazing game. And soon is finding highway. McQueen again there. That was a poor header by him though. Popple. And the whistle's gone. And they've got to do it all again. My word, what a treat that's going to be on Wednesday night at Goodison Park. Kenny Dalglish, who scored an opening goal. And Alan Hansen, the other one for Liverpool. My word, what a tremendous game it was. With Joe Jordan and Brian Greenoff scoring the Manchester United goals. Well, Alan Hansen, you scored the vital equalising goal. What did you feel with so few t few minutes to go? Well, I had that such a bad game that, you know, when it came over, I thought I was going to miss it. And the goalkeeper got a touch there, and it came up in the air, and I just prodded it in. I scrambled more than anything. But, you know, we were pleased to get a draw out of it. Although, I feel we should have won the game. We're quite happy with the draw in the end. You might, United must have surprised you the way they fought right from the kickoff. Yeah, well, we, we went a goal up and then I made a blunder for the first goal. And they came back into it well. But, you know, I think if Terry had a score with a penalty, they'd been struggling to come back again. But we showed a lot of fight near the end and we've got a replay. How did you feel at half-time, especially Terry McDermott, having just missed that crucial penalty? It was amazing, really. All the heads were down in the dressing room and, you know, we were drawn. It was as though we were getting beaten. But, you know, the, the boss and the coach had said a few words and the lads picked themselves up and... It was great to come back to get a, a draw after being 2-1 down. A final scoreline here at Main Road that is buzzing and will be buzzing for a long time to come with this most brilliant semi-final. A fine sc final score then here that reads Manchester United to yeah, Liverpool. So they've still got to decide who meets Arsenal in the final and that'll be decided at Goodison Park on Wednesday. As I said, for excitement, particularly near the end, it was impossible to beat, even if the sharpness of the skills was just a little blunted by that tacky pitch. So Manchester United must have thought they were back at Wembley when they led so close to the end of the game. Well, obviously we're a bit disappointed because uh, we were in the lead, 2-1, and uh, what was it, 10 minutes to go, was it? About eight minutes. Eight minutes to go, so uh, we're a little bit disappointed. We couldn't hang on and get through, but uh, you know, it was a great game and we're still there for the replay. It was a good cup tie. The, I wouldn't say there was the, foot, the football was fluent because, again, the drying conditions make it uh, not that it doesn't flow as well and a uh, little bit of a few niggly fouls, which the referee was quite right to stop, but it stops the continuity in the game early on. But over, it turned out a good cup tie in the end. Over the years, you've seen a lot of cup ties with Liverpool. Have you ever seen a more exciting one? Well, I can't remember a more exciting one, exciting one at the moment, but uh, I'll probably dig one or two up. Uh, you know, you go back to 1946 when I added the one in in the last minute, did nothing in Forest, but uh, that's a before your turn. <laughs> <laughs> what about the penalty incident? Uh, well, anyway, I'd better stay clear of that, I think. I, you know, it looks rather harsh from where I was, but uh, that, you know, he's close, you know, the referee's closer, so we accept his decisions. Well, as I say, he gave it, and uh, I believe for a push in the back, and he'd followed him. They'd, he'd given one or two decisions the same as this. So if they happen as free kicks, and then the penalties, if he's going to give them, and this is what the referee did. He didn't... Uh, every side... Uh, both sides got punished for it, and uh, because it happens in the penalty area, people want to treat it leniently, but there's rules, and uh, if he pushes in the penalty area or he pushes outside, then it's a free kick or a penalty for him. Good point by Bob Paisley, and in favour of the referee, at least he was in a good position, a good angle to see what was going on here. But my feeling is, if you give a penalty for that, you must give at least 15 in almost every game that's played. But what about the man who then went on to miss it, Terry McDermott? A bit nerve-wracking, you know, semi-final, but um, the good thing about it, the goalkeeper went the wrong way, and um, obviously he did the post. I was a bit sick about it, but um, the lads pulled me out of it anyway. 
Had you decided that you were going to put it that side, or did you only change your mind when you saw him moving? Um, no, I, you know, I decided just as I'm about to kick the ball, you know, I didn't, I didn't pick any particular side I was going to hit it in. Um, I just placed it, and fortunately, unfortunately, from here, he did the post. Fortunately for him, he went the wrong way, and um, it still is the post, so there was no goal. Our interviewer there was Gerald Sinstadt. So, a breathtaking day in Manchester and a day of drama and controversy at Hampden Park, Glasgow, where Aberdeen and Rangers met in the Scottish League Cup final. And that's our second match today as we join the cameras of Scottish television. The commentators are Arthur Monford and Rangers are in the white shorts. Well, Russell away. Smith could be the danger man running through in the inside right position. Russell showing nice control. Good chance for Russell. Keeping very cool indeed. Still has it. McLean arrives to help, thinks about a right foot shot, changes his mind back to Russell. McLean gets a far side to Cooper. Cooper drives it in and just wide. Well, Bobby Russell did all the leading up work there. A tremendous run by Russell after that great downfield following Drew Jabby's bad ball infield. Kept on going, finally gave it to McLean, who swept it out to Cooper, and Cooper tried to squeeze it in at Bobby Clark's left hand post. Ball spinning tantalizingly wide of the goal. So the free kick in an interesting position, this Aberdeen have pulled everyone back in and around the edge of that box. Klein is there, Cooper's there as well, and is driven in by Dawson. Short free kick touched by McDonald to Dawson, as I think Aberdeen watched the two danger men, McLean and Cooper, and it was Dawson who crashed it in with his right foot, and Clark made an excellent save at the expense of a corner. Short one this time. Cooper gets it back from Russell. Turns it across left footed. It runs straight through to the far side. It's not clear. Chance for Smith. Aberdeen didn't get it away. Short crisp ball there finally from Cooper to Smith. Had one chance to get a left foot shot in. Over the top from a good position. Ten minutes remaining in a very good first half. The game finally balanced at 0-0. Rangers certainly getting the better scoring opportunities. Wide and inevitably to Kennedy. Tackled by Dawson. Jarvie, Smith, that's a corner. This, in fact, is Aberdeen's first corner of the match. With a touch more than two minutes left. Rugby's come down, almost onto the goal line. Master taking it. McCoy, two fisted punch. Heading back in by Kennedy. Hooked on by Charlie, a great save. Beautiful corner, first of all, from McMaster. Super punch out by McCoy. Picked up by Kennedy. Monty by Kim. Jarvie saw McCoy off his line, trying to hook it in under the bar. Ball nicely down first time to Kennedy. Kennedy looking for Strachan. Harper turning it on. Is it too far? Strachan chipping it across. Goal. Chance for Davidson and a great save. But McCoy's over the line. It's a goal. Davidson scores. Disaster for Peter McCoy. Duncan Davidson scores. 13 and a half minutes gone in the second half. Duncan Davidson's fourth goal. A moment of real anxiety for the Rangers defence. It was a beautifully worked goal there on the right-hand side of the field. Archibald and Harper set it up. It looked as if Strachan couldn't reach it, but he did. He floated it across with his right foot perfectly. Rangers watched it float over. There looked no danger. Davidson headed the ball down. McCoy had it. Dropped on the line, and the ball squirmed out of his grasp over the line. It didn't even reach the back of the net. forward, straight to Russell, Miller off on a run down the right, this is Miller, on to McDonald, left foot short coming up, deflected, and a goal, Arling McDonald ties it up, 32 minutes in the second half, it's 1-1, everything to play for, Arling Miller made the running on the far side of the field, Jinked in superbly, saw McDonald coming up on his left, squared it out in front of McDonald, left foot 
Thunderbolt heading for the net. There was a deflection, I think, from John McMaster. Bobby Clark went one way, the ball went the other. Finished in the back of the net, it's 1-1. Johnston on the ground. And I think Rugby is going off. The two players crashed off the ball. Rugby and Johnston. Johnston was on the ground. The referee turned round and immediately waved Rugby off. So Rugby is off. Whistle off on the run. Smith two shouting for it. This is far lane. Free kick at the edge of the box. In the left of the corner, the middle of the just. He was indicating it certainly looked like a free kick. So we're into the third minute of injury time as McLean lines up for this free kick. That's the last kick of the regulation 90 minutes plus. McLean. Jackson. Goal! Colin Jackson scores the third minute of injury time and it's all over. Colin Jackson. The oldest player in the Rangers side, the longest serving player, signed in 1963. McLean took the free kick. Jackson was there, and the ball bulleted into the net to make the score. Rangers 2, Aberdeen 1. Here comes Derek Johnston to receive the lead cup. But this is Mary Lachlan, the wife of the Scottish Football League president, Tom Lachlan, is standing to her left. Scottish League secretary, Tommy Wall, on the left of your picture, to Mr. Lachlan's right. White and blue ribbons being attached. So. And the first big success for John Gregg as <coughs> manager of Rangers and really sets them on the way towards the treble of League Cup, Scottish FA Cup and League Championship for the second year running and uh, what an amazing achievement that would be. What about that sending off of Doug Rugby that so changed the course of the match in the second half there? And in fact, it's a complete mystery so far as television's concerned, although Aberdeen were obviously infuriated, they felt that uh, it wasn't a sending off offence. But as uh, Derek Johnson is down, and Doug Rugby is about to get his marching orders, let's get a view from Aberdeen from their goalkeeper, Bobby Clark. It was it made it very, very difficult. I mean, big Doogie Rugby, I mean, Doogie, poor Doogie swears that he didn't touch Derek and it was a bit of acting. That's life. Maybe it's a lesson he's learned to have, but I don't think he touched him. And Doogie's an honest big lad. It cost us, because once you're down to ten men, you know there's extra time. It makes it very, very difficult. I mean, a, a difficult job for us. But uh, as I say, it's maybe a lesson, Doogie, because he played magnificently up till then. So there we are then. And you've certainly had your fair ration of excellent cup tie football today. Thank you again for joining us. And congratulations to Arsenal, of course, and all their staff for getting to Wembley for the second successive year. So really there is another very important day in prospect for them after their victory over Wolves in the other semi-final yesterday. Quite a prospect then, and whoever they meet. And if uh, that final is only half as exciting as the semi-final between Manchester United and Liverpool yesterday, well, there'll be no complaints from anyone. Now Case. Flicked in there for Dalglish. Oh, Dalglish! And a goal! Green off. Jordan's right in there. And Jordan! Alderston chipping it in there. Brian Greenoff was right in there, playing much more forward in the second half. Cobble's in there. And Brian Greenoff's in there. Thompson up ahead of him. Bailey is down, and that's the goal!